his person on that board as well. And uh, I am a consultant currently for MA. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Brittany Williams. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right now. New as of May, I graduated in May, so that's a really <laughs> weird thing to say. Um, I'm an assistant professor of higher education at St. Cloud State University in Minnesota. Okay. Okay. So I come to you from there, but I'm originally from the black cultural mecca of the United States, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, okay, yes. Uh, and I'm a co-founder of two digital women's empowerment groups and hashtags. One is Sita Sister, that's S-I-S, -S, not C-I-S, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and Sister PhD. And so we do a lot of work in academia around destigmatizing what we mean by black women about centering black women's ways of knowing and their engagement. I'm also a personal PrEP user, so I came into this because um, I've dated two HIV positive men openly. Mm -hmm. Thank you, we appreciate that. Okay, so I want to start off doing something a little different. Let's do some wordplay. Um, so what comes to your mind when you hear the city girls? Period. Oh, uh, Period. Sorry. Period. You know Period. what I'm saying? Period. Period. Okay. <laughs> Period. Um, what comes to your mind when you hear Megan the Stallion? Hot girl summer queen. And she's in school at the same time as studying and... And getting a degree, mind you, at the same time. <laughs> and I just want to say, she got a, she has a song called Best She Ever Had. That is my theme for right? Hot Girl Summer. <laughs> Best She Ever Had. Carly B. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Hustler. Okay. Intersectional, like she's a stripper, but she's also an entrepreneur. Like in her former life, she was a stripper, which prepared her to be an entertainer. So because she was a stripper, that allowed her to be able to have dance moves, learn how to be an entrepreneur, learn how to make her money. So just because she was someone who was doing strip work and doing sex work, she can also now be an entrepreneur doing more at work than that, so. I think it's not for her to go that she's an entertainer. Not only that, like, how about in her strip club? Everybody use your mic. Can you use the mic? You know, also that she's a performer, right? And so it's not just she can go, I mean, I've taken pole instruction classes. You can't just go up there and start twirling. You're going to bust your butt. You're going to break your neck. You're going to hurt your back. She's performing. I mean, she has this, you know, peak position to get to get to where she's at. So she tried. I'm just saying. She tried. Okay. What um, DMs? It's direct right. messages? It goes down in the DMs. <laughs> That's what yeah, I was right DMs. now. Right, Amanda. <laughs> Instant? Instant? Fast? Instant, fast. Oh, I have 39 unread. <laughs> <laughs> so it does not go down in your DMs. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hookup culture. Do you want a word that we can do? <sighs> like, what do you think? Very difficult. Oops. Uh, I mean, that's where we are. What's wrong with hookup? No, people Just stereotype you know, us as a um, hookup culture. Oh, like yeah. Like, like, young black girls are, like, all about hookup culture. Can you please define that? What's wrong with us? What? What is hookup culture? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So... <laughs> I think in like the RJ world and from just like what I've noticed, because I also have my degree in social work, um, from what I've defined as like a culture is like uh, the apps and like how quick it is for you to have access. Like if I really wanted to right this second, I can open up my Tinder and find somebody who swiped on me because that is what happens in my world. And if I wanted to at this hotel right now, I would, like from someone who works at another, whatever, whatever, it could like, can like could hook up with me instantly versus yeah. and it's continuum you have choices and apps and, and geographical things can be met in and, and all that stuff Thanks. quickly Thanks. quickly Thanks. or not just you know intimacy like in general just intimacy. um friends with benefits I mean, friends are important, so I would. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, what about isolation? Like, isolation is a big issue for black women, right? We isolate, right? Social I isolation is a big thing, right? So, at the end of the day, maybe you need that friend with that benefit to get you out of that isolation. I live in Minnesota, so um, friends with benefits are meaningful. <laughs> okay, so the first question. 
There's a growing movement around sexual liberation, especially with young black women. But some of those movements around women embracing their sexuality are devoted, devalued of messages, protection, and safety. How do you make sure that women feel empowered to be sexually free, but are doing so in a manner that protects their health? Uh, mm, okay, I'll start. I would say by having conversations like this and making room for these conversations to happen without shame or stigma, and so that means bringing folks to the table without judging their attire or their appearance and making room for young black women to feel like it's okay to have sex. Um, there was a lot of conversation this morning about how historically that has looked a little bit different than it does now. And I think that's in part thanks to the internet. I think it's in part thanks to, we have a sort of another feminist awakening that's happening among young women of color and young black women in particular. And so it's also making sure as much as we're talking about, yes, be sexually liberated. You know, we talked about these artists in the beginning. Yes, you know, use men for what they're worth. That's what they said, not me. <laughs> Um, but also accompanying that with information around here's how you how you do kind of negotiation and here are what the HIV stats look like for our community and here's how that one sort of hookup in your dorm room on campus can have implications for the rest of your life and so I think it's about nuancing that conversation and making space for that nuance and making folks feel like it's okay. Thank you. That was very powerful. Anyone else have anything to add? Also including youth in the conversation, like they made space for us today, allowing these conversations to happen. But if you turn around and look, I don't see many of people that are in our age group in this room. Right. So making sure like right upstairs, maybe two um, flights up, it is a youth lounge. It is also a youth initiative that's going on. It would have been great if you guys would have connected with those and made sure that those youth that are in that room are hearing this conversation now. Um, referencing back to the body, so I don't work directly in HIV, but I think how I help is my writing. Yeah. So, the end of the day, like my just day to day struggles, I wrote about how I wrote a sex contract back in the day uh, to protect myself because I wanted to be in hookup culture. I was, I wanted to kind of be liberated and free. So, you know, um, my, my story is a little different being a person who was. Um, you got HIV through vertical transmission as mom as a child. So just by writing and then having other women see that, at the very least I'll get messages back and then being able to write and just all of us see our collectives, just like the Wall Project and um, the body. So like on the platforms are good too. I did. Yes. Sitting next to Gandhi, Bandy, she just rubbed off on me and wanted to rub me. <laughs> Uh, to Marisa, <laughs> who talked about the youth upstairs and making sure that they're in the space. I guess the one question I would have, knowing that this was happening down here, and your knowledge of them being up there, perhaps why wasn't there an That's effort or outreach to ensure that some of them were coming down here, especially since you're on the panel? Um, so I'm just on the panel. <laughs> I can't. I don't have the. I don't have the uh, financial wherewithal or the means to be able to tell MAG Youth Initiative that they have to be downstairs. I couldn't. Uh, the way the Youth Initiative works, they have to be in that certain room okay. with those funders. So maybe if they would have had those conversations with the funders and told the funders like, hey, the youth will be in this room having this conversation and listening to this panel discussion, great. But because well, of my pay grade, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, because of my pay grade, I, I can't negotiate that. I wish I could though. I really Thank you. <laughs> okay, so the next question is, one of the ways black women are being encouraged to protect themselves is by using PrEP. What are your personal thoughts about PrEP? So I said in my intro, I use PrEP. Um, my personal thought is that I personally feel like we should talk about PrEP more for black women. So there was a conversation this morning that um, being a black woman is not at risk, but I grew up in Atlanta and I have sex with men who live in Atlanta and Atlanta has very high HIV rates. And so as a black woman who has sex with black men who live in the city of Atlanta, I need to be on PrEP. And so I think it's about shifting the conversation. You know, if we look at, until I feel like this summer, I didn't see any Gilead marketing that had women in it. And so even normalizing the conversation that a woman can take prep is a part of the process. Um, 
once we get past the fact that, okay, there's this drug, one, this drug exists, two, you as a woman can take it, I think the next step is having that conversation with our girlfriends, being able to go back and tell folks, we talk about sister circles in the black community all the time, how am I staying at dinner when I'm talking about I went to this conference, here's what my takeaway was, I learned about PrEP, and here's some resources I found about PrEP. I have it on my Tinder bio, I'm a PrEP advocate and user, it's the second comment, I literally say, ATL born and bred, Minnesota living, prep advocate and user. And I put that so prominently because I want people to know how I feel about my role in combating HIV transmission. It has to stop with someone, so why wouldn't it stop with me? Girl, all of that, all of that. Where's that She did it good. There are so many things that young women in this country are bombarded with. What do campaign messages and images about HIV and its impact on young women need to look and sound like today to cut through the noise? It is my belief that it needs to be more um, body positive. Yes. When I look at HIV commercials, I don't see no fat black girl sitting up there yes. talking about living with HIV. I don't. And that's just the truth. And so I think a lot of the times we need to have more dark skinned black girls, yes. fat black girls, Absolutely. talking on these commercials, talking about living with HIV. Because people yes. are having sex with fat black girls. Yes. 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 <laughs> Yeah. That don't stop nothing. <laughs> I love it. You guys are awesome. <laughs> How can slash should we better leverage technology, specifically thinking about social media slash dating apps, etc., to better engage young black women around HIV? I think so. How about I'm a big proponent of mentorship, and I think that while internet is great and apps are amazing. I wouldn't be able to navigate half of this if it wasn't for my theme, like for my women mentors, like trans and all of like all the the women who I literally run to. Because I think the problem is social media is great, and I love that it creates um, uh, it gives us the ability to use it, and it's there and it's accessible. But once you use it, and once you get in it, and and then the reality hits of disclosure, or don't disclosure, like what the laws say, what the policies say, HIV decriminalization, all these things. I think the biggest thing too, and I hope if anyone takes anything out of this room, is that mentorship is key. And that yeah. if, if you can leave with anything today, please leave with somebody's name or someone's email. Or I remember like, if Gina hadn't walked up, this is my anniversary, like when I first started advocacy in 2017, <laughs> if Gina hadn't walked up to me and at least just like greeted me and, and welcomed me, then when I went on POF or Tinder or whatever, or whenever I maybe want to make more friends as a young person, to still be able to like, okay, I can go to my safe person, to my safe community, as technology gets bigger and as we go into the other century, let's make sure we're hanging on to each other as we start to progress and stuff, like we're holding on to each other. Yes. I would yes. I would add to that. So I was featured in an NPR story about my prep usage. And so I ended up with a whole bunch of Twitter DMs and Instagram DMs from women who were like, hey, I saw this thing. Can you tell me more about it? And so I think the mentorship piece is critical, but also us telling our stories yeah. so yeah. other young black women can see it. So that can be a normalized piece of it. Right. And then giving them the permission to come to us and talk to us about it. I'm very, very open about why I take PrEP, my approach to PrEP, why I'm an advocate for PrEP, 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 PrEP. Um, <laughs> and so at this point, honestly, my friends are probably tired of hearing about it because I'm always talking about it or I'm saying, you know, let me tweet something or, you know, World AIDS Day is coming or Black Women's Equal Pay Day just happened. Well, let's also talk about how Black women who have HIV also experience pay discrimination and it's even worse for them than a uh, Black woman who's HIV uh, <laughs> negative, right? And so thinking about all of that and creating the space in digital worlds for folks to be able to come back to the mentorship piece, I think is key. Yeah, I think that will help it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And our last question is, what is one piece of advice you would give young people looking to get involved in this work? How can seasoned activists, community health workers <laughs> support you slash pass the torch? Mm. Anybody, it's open. Um, mentoring uh, is extremely important, and I want to express 
mentoring, not stereotyping, not dehumanizing, not calling out, not isolating, but mentoring. There are some amazing black women in this room that have mentored me. My mom is an amazing woman, but she's not living with HIV. So she couldn't show me how to be a woman living with HIV. Gina and Vanita, sorry to call y'all out, but y'all are some amazing black women that have shown me how to openly live, thrive with HIV. Like, tears are coming to my eyes, but it's important that we have those mentors in place that show us because this epidemic, if it, is, if it is, and we keep saying in the epidemic, which is erasure of people living with HIV because in order for it to end, I have to die. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's erasure at its best. So I think mentoring and allowing black young girls to be able to have these discussions and even putting us on these panels and mentoring us how to talk about the epidemic in general is extremely important. So that's one thing that I would definitely say, get you a mentor for sure. Last part of the question. Um, how can seasoned activists, community workers um, support you slash pass the torch? So as we're aging out and you guys are aging in, how can we support you more? Who's aging? Me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proudly I'm aging. Making sure, like I was saying earlier, like, definitely, like from the conversation we were having earlier, and I love Dr. Wise. She was so bomb. Like, she was really informative. But I think some of that language is a call out, and it's not a call in, and it's not a, a embracing. And that's how young black girls felt during that moment. Well, I know I felt that way. I'm just going to be just a little bit. And so I think a lot of times, just making sure that you're calling us back into the conversation, making sure that you're reaching out to us if we did feel offended, to make sure that you understand why so that you don't make that decision again or have that type of conversation again, and making sure that you're having those spaces and making sure that we feel included in that space. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can I just close on my hand? Um, uh, the torch passing is already happening. It's going to happen whether we want it to happen or not. Because right. we can't yep. be in these roles forever. Um, yes, right. I don't want y'all. I love my, my, my mentors, but I don't want the mothers who have raised me to be doing this until they're 85. It would break my heart. It right. would break my heart. Y'all don't deserve that labor forever and ever and ever. Baby doesn't deserve it. Trina doesn't deserve it. Like, Barry doesn't deserve it. Like, Tori Cooper doesn't deserve it. Carol Tim James doesn't deserve it. So I'm immensely grateful um, just just from walking in the room, for the women who grab the quiet ones, or just the women, the the, el the elders or the mentors who come up and just grab you and say, "Hey, like, let me be this this thing." Because black girls don't ever, because we're still fighting for our womanhood, because we're still fighting for to be here and to be seen. I don't think ever get a light shine to be like, "Hey, Marnie, like you matter. Let me be here. I know the system is out there, patriarchy, racism is here, but let me be here to help you brace some of this wind." Because at the end of the day, our mentors can't walk all of this, and some of this is going to have to fall on us, and we're going to have to do some programming outside of the guidance that we have, but to at least have y'all there and be like, okay, well, just know we're here, we're always going to walk this to you, and if, if we get that, that, that epidemic in the end, cool, and if, at least if we don't, at least we're there together, like at least we made it to Wakanda as a unit. I would add um, having our back. So this is slightly tangential, but the other day I tweeted out, I was looking for a black trans woman specifically to do the design for my redesign for my website. Um, I wanted someone to make my logo and help me out with some projects that I'm working on related to black women. And I felt like it was important to center a trans woman in that moment because I don't ever want my research and I'm an academic and academia is the ivory tower and it's already sort of discriminatory in itself. So why would I reiterate or, or reproduce that, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's this guy who's in my Twitter DMs and he's like, I'm going to turn you in. And he turned me into the Minnesota state, whatever. I really don't care. <laughs> I'm in a union. This is the great thing about being in a union state. I'm not going to get fired. So it's all fine, <laughs> right? And so I think having people who make it possible for us to do the disruptive yeah. work yeah. as young folks and yeah. who are going to protect us and protect our jobs yes. and move us yeah. into spaces where our careers can advance in spite of people who want to have a silence because we are doing this is absolutely critical. And you all are a powerful group of people. I'm on a tenure track, I got a tenure clock, all of these things are happening. And so it's important for me to find people who can finance my research from outside and to collaborate with people. And so now I'm looking at how do black college women talk about prep on college campuses. And now I've learned that there's a dissertation someone just wrote about prep. And so now I can call that person, right? And so finding folks who are going to constantly connect us and keep us in connection and protect us is really critical. Okay. 
awesome. Thank you. Oh, and economic justice. Don't let me forget yes. that part. Ooh. Economic yeah. justice. Um, yes. Not just an internship, but a paid internship. Yes. Yes. Something that will allow us to be able to live our lives and sustain ourselves. Okay. Um, at this time, we're going to open the floor for some questions, Q&A. And I wanted to say, if you guys, if there's any terminology that you didn't understand, you want to be educated about, go ahead and ask it. Because there's a lot of stuff like hookup. I had to ask my nieces and nephews. I was like, what is this? Being, not that old. But I was just in my house. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if there's anything you guys want to know, please do not be afraid to ask. Make sure you have young people at the table in, in the conversation yep. because it's so important. They speak the, the language of the culture for which is not necessarily our culture or maybe your culture anymore. So thank you. Now, yeah. Q&A. Wow. Oh, they're great. Oh, Y'all did great. Y'all did. Thank you, ladies. Um, I just wanted to hear from you. Uh, we've been talking about HIV, uh, but we haven't been talking about wellness overall. So I was just wondering from um, women within your circles, how do you have those conversations involving HIV, but talk about wellness overall, sexual health, overall health and wellness, emotional wellness. How are you having those conversations in your social circles? So one of my big things is talking about sex positivity. And sex yes. positivity means all sex is good sex as long as it's healthy and consensual. And that is my number one thing that I love to talk about. If anybody knows me, I love to talk about sex positivity. And I definitely think that talking about the importance of sex positivity is great, but also including that conversation of destigmatizing HIV, destigmatizing uh, contracting an STI, because a lot of the times people don't want to go to the clinic or seek help or treatment when they do acquire those. So definitely, you know, having those healthy conversations around sex is important. We need to start having great sex, not yeah. just good yes. sex. Yes, um, I was, was going to say, um, I, I recently heard like a All the term, time. Uh, like pleasure activism and like nap ministries. And so what I'm hoping is that we can start moving into this idea that, okay, let's versus running away from sex, feeling and understanding how intimacy, how getting out of our so I social isolations, getting out of our heads and kind of looking at our bodies as vessels of, of rest and love and pleasure and to be able to realize when we're tired and we're exhausted and to not look at that and feel bad for taking the PTO time off or yes. we don't feel bad for negotiating our pay like shout yes. out again to like Valerie and Troy Cooper who I've just been like who have just like encouraged me to like know my worth and to like the, the terms just like um what is it? Intellectual property and what that means. Yep. All of that adds to your rest and that all because you're empowered now. You know what your worth is. You know how to put, you know how to provide for it. You're not like I'm just trying to figure out how to like negotiate your your pay with um, another community by yourself. You know, we do it within your your group. So I would say maybe be us um, young, maybe older or folks from our season coming in and helping us to understand what to expect as far as the hard part, the financials and the travels or the hard questions or what questions should you be answering on panels? When is it okay to leave a panel if you don't feel uncomfortable? Are you okay to be uncomfortable? Uh, is it okay to be uncomfortable? Is it okay to be exhausted? And then how to like process that, especially when you're in, you're only one in the room. You're the only black girl in the room. Is it okay to show tears and cry? I don't know. I would add to that. So for Gen Z and like younger millennials, so folks under 30, um, a lot of us have had a bajillion jobs. We've been working since we were teenagers. I want what I want, and so I'm going to work for it. And um, I try to prioritize conversations of wellness. So I was in and out of the hospital throughout my doc program until I got to my dissertation. And I was like, fuck this shit. I'm not doing this. And so really talking to my friends in our group chat and saying, this is not worth your life. And so one of my dissertation findings, because I looked at the experiences of black women administrators at predominantly white institutions was one of my participants literally said to me, I don't want to die for this shit. And I'm naming my manuscript that like as I'm working through my publication, I'm naming stuff exactly what their words were one, because there's a lot of power in saying that, yes, we care about this work and yes, we're going to do this. But if we all do this to the point that we're burnt out and we are no longer yep. here, are we actually getting the work done? We set out to do 
Where's our mentorship? Where's our system that everybody's tired? You need somebody to tell us to sit down, too. Yeah. Just, you know, yeah. you're doing too much. Sit down. <laughs> Go. I have a question. Two, I have actually, I'll lay it in two. One is you, your, um, um, I asked Valerie this early this morning when I said what happens next. You know, what happens after we did all this work? And, it's, and I look from a distance and I see these other groups of people who have done work like ours, but yet they're retiring. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they have, they, they must have a plethora of money. Mm -hmm. I can't, because I see them on Facebook and they going to China and they going mm -hmm. to all these places. I'm like, well, damn, I can't get to Myrtle right. Beach. <laughs> so I'm just like, where are they getting paid? You know, what did they do? What did I not do as a black woman who's worked over 30 some years doing exactly what God called me to do. So there's no reservation on that part. But as I look around and I look at my mortgage and I say, I'm not quite paid that off, I can't retire. I look. So my thing is, I know it's time for me to shift. I, and, I'm, and I am very keenly aware of when that time should be. I'm just so totally uncertain about what's next. Yeah. So it's not in a tenured position. Yeah. I chose not to go into academia for all of what you just shared. I chose not to go into public mm -hmm. health from a health department, state department perspective. I was called into, as all of us have, in what I call the ministry of this work. Mm -hmm. But it does not financially secure us in spaces. So part of, I think I'm acknowledging one thing is, part of the reason why folks aren't shifting to move you in when we know you should, and I'm not saying this is me, because when it's time for me to move, God will move me whether I want to or not, so I'm clear on that. But I'm saying that there's a fear of shifting because we don't know what's next, and I think we have to create what's next. But I don't know how that is. So anybody know about help me with my retirement plan? I, you know, my last statement is, and I swear it'll be the last. Have any of you presented to Eastern Stars? Have any of you presented your sex positive, sex healthy conversation to a group of women who are who uh, nationally and internationally represent? Now, I'm looking at you too, then, since you've given me the look. Um, uh, black women who are in the Eastern Stars, who are the Sisters of the Masons, mm -hmm. okay, of various sects, both Scottish Rite and other. Mm -hmm. Have you presented your sex positive message to them? That's my question. And what was your response? So, this is a complicated question for me. Uh, I'm a proud member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. And I love my soul worth. I'm in the same chapter as Donna Hubbard McCree. I heard some folks name her earlier on the panel, Phi Phi Omega in Atlanta. And there are people that I realize I can have a sex positive conversation with like Dr. McCree because she's in this work and she knows this work. But as we've all talked about and thinking about how our parents have to come around and we have to have people come around, I, I think there's a bigger community piece that needs to happen. And I don't know that it happens with our older organizations. I feel like it's going to take a united sort of piece of work from all of us as younger folks. And I think y'all are younger than me. I'm not that old. I'm You're really not. I'm None really of us not. are that old. I'm you really just started that because you want to go mold. But none of us are old. <laughs> but I, I think it's going to take a lot of young folks coming together to say this is a an important piece of our black woman identity under 30. Here's how we want you all as women who are typically over 30, who might be off college campuses now, who might be off having families and running organizations now to come to this work with us. And so I don't really, I mean, it's complicated because I've presented it in the sense of I'm having one-to-one -one conversations, but I've not stood up in a room full of powerful people and said, let's talk about sex positivity because I haven't been presented the opportunity. What's Eastern stuff? Should I know that? It's, uh, I'm, the, I'm sorry, should I know that? Yeah. Google it. Later? Google it. Okay. Uh, yeah. there, are not many, there are not many times when you do get in spaces yeah. to be able to talk about sex positivity and uh, a lot of times if we do come into the rooms, it's unpaid. Yeah. So, and, and so, I, so let me just say this in closure. 
you know, it was, since we're learning from you and you're learning from us, sometimes you have to introduce yourself into that space. Yes, you have to inject yourself into that space. I gave you, I used that as an example. You used AKA. Yeah. You, I used Eastern Star because of their tradition mm -hmm. yep. in the black community, because of their pure numbers, mm -hmm. to the fact that they represent a massive group of black women who we're trying to get to, yep. but they're not gonna come to us, so we have to go to them. And so I would encourage and edify you to when you go back home to wherever you come from or if there are groups of women who fit what I'm trying mm -hmm. to describe you have to go to them you have to go to them mm -hmm. and the pay will come later okay, mm -hmm. okay. I mean, I'm not gonna lie though it is a bit exhausting yeah. as a black girl living with HIV to constantly have to tell mm -hmm. my message and talk about sex positivity on a consistent ba basis we need without it is very exhausting. And as I sit on these panels and I go to these conferences, and yes, they're paying for rooms and they're paying for me to be able to be there, and I greatly appreciate it. I honor you. I really, when y'all were sitting up here, we were talking about how beautiful you guys look, but it is important. And it is something I can't live without. I can't live or breathe or even any of that without being financially compensated. <laughs> But I mean, we, this is why we're here. I mean, now now that we're actually putting it out in the universe that like, we, you know, our worth is. Oh. But I would love, I would love to sit down. I would love to, I would love to be in those rooms and those spaces. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm gonna be real quick. I have a feeling we're gonna get back to that. Recently, I've been talking to a mentor of mine, and she's like, "Oh, you're gonna be here forever." And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be here forever." And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be here forever." And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be here forever." And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be here forever." And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be here forever." And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be here forever." And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be here forever." And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be here forever." And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be here forever." And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be here forever." And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be here forever." And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be here forever." And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna since we're in this space and we keep talking about passing this torch, the wrong torch will burn you. So if we're not dealing with our trauma as we're talking about intergenerational leadership, I want to hear from the panel, what do you not want in that torch when it's passed to you? What do we need to keep with us and heal from and not pass to you all when we're talking about this next generation of leadership? So I... I'll go first and follow on the sword because I feel slightly protected. Respectability will not save us um, is, is the easiest and fastest thing I can say. There is absolutely a way in which I engage people where they are, but people need to do the same thing for us as young folks. And so I very intentionally wore the shirt that I'm wearing with my boobs out very intentionally because this is what a professor looks like. And so how are we shifting what it means for us to understand what it means to be a young black woman. How are we talking about allowing black women to show up as their most authentic selves and making space for that? And so I think you all need to leave with you the idea that I need to show up in a Chanel suit in order to be taken serious because Martin Luther King got beat over the head in the suit, dressed to the nines. Coretta Scott King was 